from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Paul reminds us to be truthful. Say yes when you mean yes, and no when you mean no. But attached to that word yes, he attaches this word called amen. Because it ends so many prayers, it can be very easy to take that word trivially. It doesn't just mean I believe or announce the end of a prayer, it means that I'm going to profoundly say, yes, Lord, with the fervor of our Blessed Mother, who said, let it be done to me according to your word. That's the force of the word. And it's a good thing to meditate on this and look how serious we are about this word. St. Paul goes on to say there's a seal set on us as a first installment. The first installment was baptism. The seal that was set upon us was an indelible mark of character placed on our soul. And afterwards comes confirmation where that seal is emboldened. There, so there are, for the baptized person, generally there are two, you could say, tattoos placed on your soul that mark a character that not only dignifies you as a Christian, but it also dignifies the Lord as you give him glory in conformity with that character, which often times through sin, can be sullied. There's a third mark of character which is given to the ordained. This mark of character, like I said, is a tattoo on the soul, and it captures our heart for Christ. It's an imprinting that reveals that we are children of God. You could say a type of birthmark that identifies us for being one of God's dear children given at baptism. And so amen implies that I am faithful to Christ and I am faithful to what that mark of character represents as I present myself to the world. And so Jesus would say to his disciples in reference to that, you are the salt of the earth. Salt as, a preser as something that preserves. So salt has an aspect of being a preservative, but it's, and it's also a seasoning. So, it pres so this grace, you being salt, means that you're doing everything you can spiritually to preserve your life in Christ. And in preserving that life in Christ, you become a seasoning for the world. You add a spice that is not there unless there are Christians. 
This seasoning makes the world a better place. And that's what we are called to do. Since the fall of Adam, we need grace to do this. If salt loses its taste, the, the evil one does not have to bring us down and set us back and discourage us by great acts of terror. He's very pleased to do it a millimeter at a time. And so the compromise to the taste of salt can be happening in the way we become careless in devotion, going through things in a per perfunctory manner, rattling prayers instead of praying, shortcutting devotions, like forgetting and leaving aside acts of reverence, genuflecting, kneeling, the way, we the way we respond to coming to receive the Holy Eucharist and our devotion with which we handle the host. All these little things come little by little, but pretty soon they become a lacking spiritual life. Then the next thing that can happen after our devotions begin to get eroded, sin is not taken so seriously. That's the next step. It was only a white lie. That's the first step in a long trek down. And then there's, this, and then there's the idea of presumption. God will understand. It'll be okay. Perhaps not short of the sacrament of reconciliation. My parents understood, but there were consequences of my actions that remained very painful. I'm sure we all can relate to this. And so we, we have to be careful with being presumptuous toward the Lord. And then another word comes up here, the word called insipid, having no zest, no flavor, no taste. Our, once these things start to happen, careless devotion, little sins, and then being presumptuous, these things begin to make us insipid. There is no more zeal, no more desire. Going to Mass becomes a burden, except for people who go to daily Mass, you're all set. But daily, mass becomes a burden, and then it becomes an act of convenience. Our spiritual life and our morality is no longer guided by the church, but it is an a la carte mentality that I pick and choose what I want because I think it's going to be okay. There is no amen in this. Honoring the Sabbath becomes optional and trivial. Instead, we honor the Sabbath of the Mall of New Hampshire and the soccer fields of the state. The Eucharist no longer becomes important because I'm too busy to be occupied by things. Scripture no longer is the Word of God, but it's something I might read for entertainment or as convenience, or maybe occasionally play Bible roulette to see if God has an answer for me. God made us as the salt of the earth so that humanity can be saturated with good taste because of the presence of Christ and have a zest and a savor that makes the world envious of what we have in Jesus Christ by the sacred marks of character on our souls as we are preserved for heaven. Regina Jenny, let her